Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's review we're going to be taking a look at the Transformers Kingdom Deluxe Class Huffer. Finally the War for Cybertron representation of everybody's favourite Autobot pessimist. I know many of you, myself included, have been eagerly awaiting this figure's release ever since he was unveiled to be a part of the second wave of Kingdom figures and Huffer marks the only G1 character to be introduced into the Wave 2 Deluxe Class lineup. Now despite Kingdom Huffer being a great update on the character, he certainly isn't without his flaws and I for sure have many nitpicks, especially as far as the colorization is concerned. Taking a look here at the details, as far as the torso upwards is concerned, I believe Takaratomi and Hasbro have done a really nice job, especially where that head sculpt is concerned. You can see that as far as the color of plastic that they have cast both the torso and the head in, it really does match what we see on screen. You can see that we've got an amazing silver paint application applied for the faceplate, and the eyes, nose, and mouth can clearly be seen due to the exquisite sculpt work. You can also see some metallic blue there used for the eyes. However, Huffer unfortunately suffers from a very similar syndrome to Earthrise Optimus in the sense that due to his eyes being blue, they can become rather lost due to the main helmet being completely cast out of a blue plastic. As we take a look here down to the lower section of Huffer's torso, this in my opinion once again looks very accurate to the show. We've got the Autobot insignia and a mix of both baby blue as well as darker blue, much like Huffer's original character model. As we take a look here towards his arms, this is unfortunately where some of my critiques do lay. For the most part, the shoulder and the forearm looks really well done. As we move here unfortunately down to the hands, this is where I have one of my major critiques. Unlike some of the initial promo images which did showcase this character having grey hands, Hasbro and Takaratomi have opt to give him black hands which in my opinion is a major eyesore especially when we do get him into vehicle mode as the hands really do stick out like a sore thumb, much like they do here in my opinion in the robot mode. As we turn our attention here down to the lower crutch plate, you can see how we do have some nice silver metallic paintwork as well as some fantastic skull work. The fires, unlike his original G1 model have unfortunately just been cast out of a grey plastic and are not in the same colour of blue plastic that we got here for the torso as well as for the head. As we take a look here towards the shins you can see some really nice looking skull work here however I would have liked to have seen them find a way to actually take the wheels and fold them into the hollow cavities that we have here on the back of the legs. Considering the character model of Huffer never had wheels on the sides of his legs and that he does have these massive hollow spaces here at the back I'm more than certain that Hasbro could have found a way to collapse these in in order to help aid G1 action and of course to fill out some of the hollow spacing. As we take a look here towards the feet, much like my critiques with the hands, on the initial promo images these grey sections were depicted as being orange, of course to match what we have here for both the foot and the upper shin section. However, here for the final release they have opted to completely cast these here out of a grey plastic, which once again in my opinion does stick out like a sore thumb. As we spin around here to the back you can see that we do have the hood section of the vehicle mode that sits just over the top of Huffer's head and I personally believe that this here has come out really nicely. As this is on a double hinge joint, there are a variety of ways in which you can store this. I personally prefer to leave it slightly compressed so that it is closer towards the body. However, you can extend it in order to create a little bit more of an obtrusive look. Or you could lift this here all the way up so that it is really sitting over the top of Huffer's head sculpt. As far as articulation is concerned, we do get a ball joint here at the head. So this can look left to right as well as look up and down slightly and can ever so slightly tilt left to right. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the shoulder as well as a 90 degree bend. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the bicep as well as an elbow joint which looks as if it can roughly bend to I would say 85 degrees. It's not a dead 90 degree angle. Unfortunately we do not get any form of wrist rotation. We do get a full 360 here at the waist. The legs can kick forwards that far as well as back to that far. He can of course do the splits. We do get a full 360 rotation here at the fire as well as a well past 90 degree range of motion here at the knee due to the nature of the transformation and the hollow nature of the back of the legs. And then taking a look here at the feet, as per tradition with the War for Cybertron trilogy, Huffer does have ankle rocker pivot, although I would have loved to have seen them perhaps extend what I imagine is this ankle piece, so that when you do maximise that range of motion, it would create for a rather coherent look. You can see that as you begin to bend it, it can become slightly unsightly in my opinion, and I do definitely believe they could have found a way to slightly extend that. But overall, for a deluxe class, I definitely do believe that he is a great update over any of the previous versions of Huffer, and there is no doubt that he is probably the best generation version we have ever gotten. There are just a few minor critiques that I have, mainly as far as the colorization is concerned, but I'm pretty certain Hasbro could have perfected, especially as we did see some of the adjustments on some of the initial promo images. As far as accessories are concerned, Huffer does actually come with two accessories, the first of which here is this shield. Now this here is mainly, in my opinion, to help aid the look of his truck mode, although here for robot mode it definitely does create for a rather cool looking shield. You can see how we've got some fantastic sculpting and detailing here at the top. This entire piece has been cast out of orange 
plastic so everything that you see here on the top is indeed paintwork I do think the silver here has come out rather nicely as well as this almost gun metal that they have used here for the top as far as incorporating it onto the figure he does have some five millimeter ports scattered all the way throughout him so if you wanted to you could store this on the leg however personally I prefer to store it here on the side of the arm and I really do think he looks rather awesome with it of course from what I can remember Huffer was never really a character that fought with weapons although it's still nice that they did add some additional accessories we of course do get this blaster and this here looks fantastic much like I stated in my thoughts and analysis video when this figure was first officially unveiled this is by far one of the most futuristic and stylistic blasters that I have seen from the War for Cybertron so far the sculpt and detail looks fantastic and I'm pretty certain that the design is carried directly over from one of the Hasbro nerf guns you can see that much like the shield this too has been cast out of an entirely orange plastic however this time has got a super nice gunmetal grey applied over the top in order to create a little more of an authentic feel this can be pegged into once again any of the five millimeter ports or can be safely stored into Huffer's hand and overall I believe he looks fantastic especially considering that this character in the show didn't necessarily get hands-on as far as combat was concerned here for a War for Cybertron Deluxe mini bot size comparison, we have Huffer compared next to both Bumblebee and Cliffjumper, and of course Warpath, and as far as the scaling is concerned, I think this here works rather nicely. If anything, Huffer should be a smidge smaller, however that is merely just by perhaps one centimetre. As a whole, I think this works really nicely, and of course, as when in vehicle mode, Huffer is designed to tow Optimus Prime's trailer, I believe that what we have is a great compromise. Here for a Voyager class size comparison, we have Huffer compared next to both Grapple, Optimus Prime, and Hoy and much like we saw when I was comparing him to some of the mini bots I believe this scale here works really nicely especially as far as the scale between hoist and grapple is concerned Turning to transformation, I am in no doubt to state that Huffer here is by far one of the most simplistic War for Cybertron Deluxe figures that we have currently to date. To begin with, what I would recommend doing is coming here to the base of the feet, just ensuring that the ankle rocker joint is straightened out. We can then take these sections, bring them all the way up, and this tab will peg here into this slot, so just snap that in there, and of course repeat the same process. We can then bring both of these halves together and just clip them in there nice and securely. I would then recommend taking the arms here, straightening these out, taking this back plate, and it's completely extending this here as far up as it can go. You're then going to want to take Huffer's head, rotate it so that the front is now facing the back. We can then utilize this section, which can almost act as a fake ab crunch in robot mode, although the entire torso unfortunately doesn't move with it, seeing as this section here is on its own structure. We're then going to want to bring this section here forward. You're going to want to take the arms, pull these here out, and of course, repeat the same process, disengage that. We can then take the wheels, snap them nice and securely into place. And now it's simply just a matter of of manipulating the arms so that we do not obstruct the front cab section. So just rotate those sections around, come here to this, this here will snap securely there into place. We do have a pair of tabs here on the hips that will peg into some slots on the top of Huffer's shoulders. So just ensure that this here is snapped in nice and securely. And of course, come here to this side and repeat the exact same process. We can then take the knee joint and completely hinge this entire section up. Now you can see here that we have two tabs that will peg into these two slots. So bring this here all the way up until you can feel them really click securely there into place. You're then going to want to take the hands and simply just hinge those like so, however ensure that they are in a straight line. And then it is simply just a matter of hinging this entire region up. You're going to want to make sure that the tabs go into these slots first. So angle this back, snap that into place snap that there into place and for the most part here we have Huffer fully transformed up into his semi truck. Now personally I actually do believe this here to be a great representation of what we saw in the original 80s show. You can see that as far as the detail is concerned we've got some fantastic silver here for the front grille. They really have gone all out as far as the paintwork is concerned here for the alternate mode. It's just a shame that the robot mode at least in my opinion is not painted as well as what we got on some of the initial promo images. The entire windscreen as well as the windows here have been cast out of a transparent blue plastic which if you're a long-term viewer of the channel you'll all know how much I love transparent blue plastic the window wipers too have been picked out in a nice black and we've also got these floodlights here which have been painted in both silver and blue as we take a look at him here from a side perspective all of the rims have been picked out in silver however I am unable to mention that to me the vehicle mode does look slightly wonky it definitely does appear as if it slants upwards which to me creates a rather unfinished look and I have tried my best to ensure that everything is secured appropriately and there is simply nothing 
nothing that I can do. You can see that we've got some nice silver here for the rims at the back and then this entire trailer hitch section has been sculpted really nicely and I do love the metallic grating detail that we also have here. Unfortunately the hands do clearly just hang out here on the back and I'm pretty certain they could have found a way to actually conceal these within the forearms although that may have led to the arms being very hollow in robot mode so that's something that I'm easily able to look past. The figure is able to roll really smoothly along the ground which is fantastic and if we bring in some of his accessories you can take the shield and this will essentially peg into the back of this bed so just snap that in there and the gun is actually really interesting I was not expecting this you simply just want to take these two halves here and split them which really I have never seen on a War for Cybertron figure especially for a piece which is this small you're basically now going to want to take these slots that we have here on the back and tap them here into these orange sections so just snap that in there and then of course come here to this section and repeat the same process and there we have Huffer completely transformed with all of his accessories and considering that this piece here is formed out of his blaster as well as the shield I actually don't believe this here looks too bad at all I also do like how they have left the interior of this orange as it does blend rather nicely with the overall colorization that we have here for the vehicle mode and as far as weapon storage is concerned this is by far one of the most creative examples that I personally have ever seen now of course much like I'm sure many of you are aware in the G1 series when Optimus Prime is wounded Huffer does indeed offer to actually tow Optimus Prime's trailer and as the Earthrise Optimus did come with a trailer Hasbro have actually incorporated a 5mm port into the trailer hitch so that you can replicate that scene from the 80s show so just to demonstrate that you're going to want to remove all of these accessories here and set them off to the side we can then bring in Prime's trailer you can see here that we have the trailer hitch align this up appropriately and there you have Huffer towing Optimus's trailer now personally judging by how it looks in the show I do believe Huffer's alternate mode should would be slightly smaller this here does look a little too oversized in my opinion but overall it does work rather nicely and I am so glad that they did actually incorporate that trailer hitch so that you can replicate what is really a one-off scene here for a very quick vehicle mode size comparison here we have Huffer compared next to all of the Autobots that I showcased in the robot mode comparisons and here when we have all of these vehicles concerned I believe he scales rather nicely of course he is a semi truck so he's not going to be as small as far as height is concerned when compared to the likes of Cliff Jumper and Bumblebee however as as far as the length is concerned, I would say that they are pretty much exactly the same. Of course, as he is a mini bot, you would expect them all to be roughly the same scale. And then bringing here Warpath into the equation, you can see how Warpath 2 is very similar as far as scaling is concerned. But then when you bring in the likes of Hoist, who is also a deluxe class, they are roughly also the exact same size. So maybe he should be reduced perhaps by 5%. I've always imagined Huffer to be significantly smaller when compared to both Hoist and Optimus Prime. As when you bring both of these characters for a comparison, you can see that as far as vehicle mode is concerned, despite the length, Huffer really and truly isn't that much smaller than Prime as far as height is concerned. But nevertheless, I believe the scale works for the most part rather well. And as they were trying to factor in the trailer gimmick, I can understand as to why maybe they had to compromise as far as the scaling is concerned. But overall, it's not too much of a drawback. And I believe he looks really nice with some of these other Autobots. And so some final thoughts, much like the majority of the War for Cybertron figures that give updated representations of some of our favorite G1 characters, this version of Huffer is potentially the best representation we have gotten of this character in the Generations toy line. Despite some of the discrepancies that I may have with the colorization in his robot mode, as far as the actual sculpt work is concerned, I believe him to look almost spot on to his original character model. The only area which to me is majorly inaccurate is the fact that the wheels do unfortunately hang on the side of the legs and as he does have massive hollow gaps on the back of the legs, I'm almost certain that Hasbro could have found a way to conceal those. But other than that, the robot mode looks fantastic. I do love the addition of accessories as to be fair, they didn't necessarily have to include any accessories with this character. The shield is a nice touch, whilst there's an accessory that I probably won't be displaying him with. The blaster, for sure, is one of my favourite War for Cybertron Deluxe accessories, as it looks so futuristic and, of course, stylistic. I also believe that the paintwork on both the shield and the gun has come out really nicely, and the transformation, while simplistic, is definitely effective, and due to the simplistic nature, it makes it incredibly enjoyable to revert back to alternate mode and, of course, to robot mode multiple times. As far as the vehicle mode is concerned, much like the robot mode it is near perfect to what we got from the original 80s show the paintwork has all come out really nicely and from what i can tell they haven't skimped out on any areas even going into the extra detail of painting the tail lights which for most deluxes is an area which they tend to miss out on i also do like the compatibility between earthrise optimus's trailer that in my opinion is a very nice homage from that one scene that i believe we saw in the original show and as far as scaling is concerned whilst i personally don't believe it to be spot on it is a close enough approximation and i am certainly able to look past 
blasted. So overall, if you are a fan of the War for Cybertron and of course the original Autobot arc crew, you are going to have to add Huffer here to your collection. I know that he will be a character that sells out immediately as judging from some of the pre-order listings, he already for some is the highlight out of Wave 2. So if you are able to get your hands on him and he is a figure that appeals to you, I would definitely recommend you go for it any opportunity that you are given. I really hope that you enjoyed this review. If you did, please do let me know down in the comment section below. Also be sure to let me know on what you think of the figure and whether or not you agree with my thoughts. I thank you all for watching and until my next review, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.